if I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you going to scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just going to sit there and let them burn? Yeah. Hey, this is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to the program. This is Hollywood Matrix episode six. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Visit us on teespring.com. You can visit us on Patreon. Of course, our website, don't let them burn.com. Also, uh, you can get us on Parlor or Parlay, however you want to say that. It's Parlay is French, but it's spelled Parlor. Um, so you can uh, follow us on there. We kind of we're on Facebook still and Twitter, but you know those things have all sorts of problems. They just removed President from the status of Donald J. Trump on Facebook. Check that out. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about tonight, but I want to inform you about that. Tonight we have my guest, my friend, William Ramsey, and we're going to be talking about the occult in Hollywood. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm good. Thanks for having me back. All right. Um, yeah. Been an interesting week. <laughs> it has. It's been a very interesting. There's a lot of news. Holy smokes. Yes. And it's just left and right. Goodness gracious. Yeah. But um, for the topic today, um, this is one of his books, Children of the Beast, uh, chronicling a lot of things dealing with Al Aleister Crowley and how he affected our culture. So the children are the people that actually follow him. And you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised who they are. So I have a couple pictures in the in the thumbnail there. And one of them is um, 007. I don't know if, if you want to get into that now, but for people that wonder, why am I putting 007 there? There's a reason. And we'll probably touch that tonight. Um, and some other ones that really, they're just horror movies, witchcraft and whatnot. So anyway, where'd you, where would you like to start tonight, sir? 007 is a great start. Ian Fleming uh, was working for British intelligence during World War II, and he took on the name of 007 from an old, earlier magician in English history, but who also was like the guy who uh, created the Enochian language. It was uh, Kelly, and I can't remember the magician's name. Anyway, so Fleming was very aware of the occult, and actually had some kind of conversations. Crowley actually sent Ian Fleming uh, a letter. So there's a letter in Children of the Beast from Crowley after Hitler, Hitler's third in command, really, Hess, was sent to northern England, Scotland area, to supposedly negotiate a peace with uh, England. So they had this guy who flew all the way over there and wanted to talk and negotiate a peace. And so Crowley said, I can talk to this guy because Crowley was very much into the, obviously very much into the occult and astrology. And so was Hess. Hess was a big time occultist. So uh, they were, you know, he was offering his services to Fleming who was right under the British Naval Command and in intelligence. So he was always running operations. And a lot of the stuff that went into his books is from his World War II experiences. So a lot of the card games that he was playing or the theme of gambling that's in Ian Fleming's 007 films almost all the time is something that Fleming experienced. So when he was in Portugal and things like that, but the actual in the first Crowley film and book, Casino Royale, Le Chiffre, which in French means the cipher or like the riddle, was based upon Crowley. So he had this look and, and visage of Crowley. So Fleming definitely was drawing, drawing on his knowledge of Crowley into 007. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, very interesting. So a lot of these guys kind of knew each other, Crowley and Fleming, definitely. And the Fleming family were from Scotland. So they were probably pretty aware of Crowley's doings up at Bulliskin Manor and things like that. Yeah. And something about two ball cane and. <laughs> right. So the two ball cane is supposedly like the, the Masonic kind of ball and that it's supposed to be used in the Facebook. Uh, insignia as well. So there might be uh, a lot of things going on there. But yeah, no, Fleming definitely knew Crowley. And uh, I think I referenced that in that book as well, mm -hmm. and, uh, their knowledge of Crowley. Yeah. And this movie, um, not Casino Royale, but the, the newest newest one, is, is it Spectre? No, it's not Spectre, is it? That's the last one. 
Anyway, the newest one coming out, uh, no one knows what it's really about, but I hear some about some references to Donald Trump and whatnot. So they're they sound like they're going to get going to get woke as well. <laughs> so um, hey, who knows, right? Um, who knows? Yeah, that's that's the rumors right now, and uh, they're supposedly we don't know for sure. Supposedly setting up a black female uh, 007, which in a regular world that would be kind of interesting, but in the woke world, we know what they're trying to do. <laughs> so um, it is interesting stuff. The connections to Crowley are all over the place, and yeah, this is a good place to start because a lot of people are anticipating this one right here. No time to die. Um, right. And I mean, that's what the most famous spy series in history, right? Yes. Yes. And the man, the 007 character is not necessarily, he's an amoral person, really. When he's a what? An amoral person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, license to kill. Yeah. With impunity. Um, so, yeah, very interesting stuff here. Um, where else would you like to take us unless you... Um, Absolutely. Well, I mean, I did do that movie, Occult Hollywood, so I covered a lot of things. John D. was the person that Fleming got 007 from. That was mm -hmm. John D.'s code name. And John D. was the magician or house magician to uh, Queen Elizabeth. So D. was, you know, an alchemist and all this other stuff. But you can see, I think he had a lot of symbols and things like that. But he basically had the Enochian language given to him. And it's something that Crowley did and Jack Parsons did is use this kind of magical board and uh, communicate with other dimensions. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah, so you can see some of that in, and there's a lot supposedly Fleming was in the know. He's, he went, went to Eton, you know, he was part of the, the upper class and definitely in the UK. And apparently, you know, I haven't read all of his books, but he uh, put a lot of, inside information into his books. Particularly, he had like a reference to Le Cirque, which is a straight up post-war fascist circle. So he had some of these clubs, definitely he was using real uh, events and putting them into his books. Now, I don't know how much of that bleeds over to the films, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a fairly well-networked guy. I mean, like, yeah. sure. You probably definitely have to know some deep occult knowledge to even get um, the references in the film if they're there, because you know, an average person watching, they're just seeing a spy film, right? right. <laughs> you know, no so, doubt. Very interesting stuff. Um, and yeah, it, one of one of the people that he knew that Fleming knew was a guy by the name of Dennis Wheatley who made a bunch of occult movies. So I cover him in occult Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So if you look up Dennis Wheatley, uh, he did two films. Devil rides out to the devil a daughter, but he actually sat and had dinner with Crowley. So Wheatley's films, like the Hammer films, which are much more known in the UK than here, but uh, that's very interesting. The other thing that's interesting is that his daughter Wheatley it was passed away. He was actually the real Stephen King and really influenced Fleming. So his, Wheatley's spy series uh, was the basis for Fleming, but Fleming really outshone or outshined. Wheatley, he was not very well known in the U.S., but mm -hmm. tons of occult uh, works. He's friends with Christopher Lee, who was uh, in a lot of the Lord of the Rings films. Yeah. Uh, so Wheatley is very, and he also uh, wrote a semi-fictional book called The Used Dark Forces, which um, was based upon the Nazis and the, what the Nazis were up to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Wheatley is a very important figure uh, for many reasons. So there's actually a picture of somebody who looks like Crowley this kind of bald headed guy. But uh, there's actually a signed copy of a book of Crowley's magic and theory and practice that he signed to Wheatley. And he was referencing a nice meal that they had had. And, right. uh, but it's interesting because when we talked last, we talked about that meeting in the desert about the UFOs Yeah, well, who's in that meeting of the desert with a bunch of occultists and stuff, Dennis Wheatley's daughter. So she's uh -huh. around. So there, she's like a direct tie through her dad to Crowley. The living tie, like somebody who's literally alive. Right. That's crazy. I can't remember her first name. I actually reached out to her, but she didn't really have any interest in talking about her father at all. She talks about Stonehenge and astronomy and astrology, I think. Yeah. And UFOs now, I guess. But yeah, Dennis Wheatley is actually really important. And uh, 
I cover his stuff because in some of his films, this, he's like a his film. He had this character Mokata, who's basically another Crowley figure. Yeah. So, and that's from uh, The Devil Rise Out. So these guys, Fleming and Wheatley, are using this pastiche or this uh, personage that's very much Crowley like in their fictional literature. Yeah. So, so people watching or reading this stuff, I mean, it's pretty obviously a cult, but they'll say, hey, come on, man. It's just literature. It doesn't affect me. <laughs> well, I would say he, Wheatley himself thought that there was a definite battle of good and evil. And mm -hmm. I think that he integrated a lot of that stuff into his books as, you know, trying to explain that. So I think he would say he was on the forces of light. But um, there's definitely, I mean, The Devil Rides Out is definitely a cult inspired. There's like human sacrifice and they do something and the devil shows up and it's uh, pretty dark and a lot of he puts in all of his knowledge of the occult into those books. So, mm. but, uh, so those films are, are around. And a lot of these guys, a lot of artists and things were influenced by Wheatley. Like I think black Sabbath said they got a lot of ideas from reading Dennis. Yeah. Wheatley. So these guys all uh, were aware, you know, it was kind of like Pulp Fiction. That was Pulp Fiction for UK. Mm. And is ties here to theosophy. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, so he's publishing works by the, yeah, if you look at his corpus of works, he put out like 40 or 50 or 60 books on a variety. Some were fictional, some non-fictional, different series. He was very, he was a voluminous writer. So mm -hmm. uh, you can just see all of these kind of influence, black magic story, um, double, uh, yeah. I think there's actually like a, uh, a Dennis Wheatley reader that taught, that has like all of his occult books, occult influence books. Oh. So somebody's asking, you know, about Eisenhower's daughter, granddaughter? Well, supposedly, right? Isn't she? I think she's in that mixes with that group, kind of the new age group. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about her. Yeah. And someone else says Lex Luthor is based off Crowley. And that is true. That is true. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. I didn't know that. I've never seen the confirmation of that, but it would be interesting to read, read more about that. I'm not aware of that. Read um, Our Gods Wear Spandex. Our Gods Wear Spandex, okay. Yeah, that, that, I know that, yeah. That author, he's not, the author's not a Christian or anything. He's just pretty much yeah. showing, he, actually he's a Buddhist, and he's showing um, people that, you know how you know Christians say that you have a God-shaped heart or a God-shaped hole in your heart? It's something sure. like that he's trying to get across from a secular point of view. And so he's showing you how a lot of us worship superheroes who don't even know it um, because of that. That sure. deficit. And Interesting. So, I believe that. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, Makes perfect cool. sense. Yeah. So Wheatley and, and Fleming all went through World War II together, and uh, you know, it's still those are influential guys in in these films. So definitely an occult aspect to some of these Hollywood, you know, B movie types. Right. And Hollywood, I, and even though I don't have any notes about it right now, but I know that Hollywood, a lot of it started on uh, with. Um, occultism and whatnot, seances, you name it, uh, that's not usually shown in the history of Hollywood. So, I believe it. And there's a lot of black magic even to this day in uh, Los Angeles, no question. Mm -hmm. so, Look at this. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the book I was talking about. They used Dark Forces. Oh. But really his inquiry into... Um, his inquiry into, you know, the Nazism of the... of uh, the occult Nazism. Yeah. And I was just speaking about this to somebody today and they were blown away that, you know, all that stuff was in Hitler's era, but Hey, these uh, forces, these spiritual forces don't go away. They keep pushing us towards something that looks new, but it's not new. Nothing new under the sun as the Bible claims. So, um, yeah, so interesting stuff here. I never really knew about this dude. Yeah. And there's uh, so if you look, the devil rides out on the bottom right hand side, You'll see a picture on the left that's based on Crowley, Mokata. And there's Christopher Lee, who was right. just a giant in so many films. And uh, he was famously in The Wicker Man, which is about human sacrifice. Yeah. Satanism and human sacrifice. Yeah. He's actually the kind of uh, evil magician. Um, but yeah, that Wicker ceremony, ceremony is something that went back into, into the past, really. Yeah. And the Druids. And the Druids, uh, right. Druid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's all where Burning Man comes from. The you know, right, 
right. And then you had in the in the rider or the graphics for this show, you included that midsummer picture, right? Yes. Which is based or like influenced by Wicker Man. So or it's mm -hmm. the same kind of occultism they use the yeah. They use, and this is like a healing sign. See that sign? That's an occult sign. Joe Biden just made that recently. Uh, That's a Masonic sign. Wow. So he's putting his hands up there. He's healing the sun, which is, oh, you know, which is the symbol of Lucifer, too. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Joe, Joe Biden's totally into the occult, man. He's oh, probably, yeah. He's probably tell, made yeah. When you do the math on this calling number for the uh, voting, you will see the 666, but you know, right? And they had the pentagram integrated into Biden Harris, so it's like, and that family, man, mm -hmm. Hunter Biden was up to horrific acts. Some of that, uh, yeah, incredible criminal. I'm surprised he's uh, walking free. Yeah, I noticed that some of the pictures that, that are shown, I mean, you know, obviously, you can't show some of the acts because they have underage, you know. And um, so I get that, and I don't want to see that, <laughs> and I don't want that on my computer. But it's pretty obvious when you look at enough of the pictures. It's he's bad. He's a bad. He's bad news. Very bad. Yeah, Very not bad. a good person. Um, you, I mean, yeah, it's just. A, it's, you mentioned uh, Midsummer. I want to get into some of this. Um, yeah, Midsummer is very interesting. That that to me just reminded me of like a Wicker Man story. They go back into the woods. There's a pyramid. Um. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. There's a lot of like sacrifice. People start dying, like they're brought in, and then slowly they get murdered and murdered. It's almost like a yeah, total witchcraft. Yeah, uh, witchcraft. Yeah, man. I, you know, I didn't watch the movie, but I saw somebody else talk about it, and they're pretty credible. And um, from what they were saying, I didn't, I didn't want to watch the movie even after they said what they had to say. I didn't, I wasn't interested at all because it's, it's basically an initiation movie. I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the real, I mean, the real twist on it is that she likes it at the end. She's smiling wow. and enjoying it. So it gets pretty dark. Yeah. So she yeah. sees all the killings and the. It ends up with like a Wicker Man ending. Everything gets burned up. And look at look at the cross symbolism, which you know that this probably uh, points to May Day or whatnot. Right. You know, these little kids walking around this pole. Um, right. So the maypole is actually kind of like a fertility ritual and all this stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it goes back. And this guy who made this movie, his earlier one, I forgot the name of that, was full of occultism too. Yeah. Was, there was like some demon in the house and mm -hmm. possessing the family. I forgot what his the, the you know, writer director's name was. Isn't uh, this a A24 movie? Yes. We got to talk about this company uh, if you know much about it. Uh, a24 all of the movies if not or maybe not all but most and you know if i could search enough and see it might be all the movies they put out are pretty much uh so have some ties somehow some way to some witchcraft theme really interesting I'm yeah surprised. um I'm surprised. so they're the one that put out midsummer uh, yeah. so the first couple movies were very, very weird. I mean, you know how you have regular dialogue and you know you're talking, but in these some of these movies, they like, yeah, so you'll see me and I got you know, and I'm gonna go down the street and they talk so weird. <laughs> this one right here, uh, I believe that yeah, this came out last year. This one is really about um Prometheus mixed with a little bit of Lovecraftian um Cthulhu and whatnot. It's it's a, it's a movie about some gods, but it doesn't. It's not portrayed that way. But once you start seeing the symbolism, really interesting. You see Chitulu in there. You see, you know, you, you're basically uh, you're flying too close to the sun. Get down, which is the lighthouse. Okay, right. uh, it's a weird movie. But A24 is one of these companies that are they're growing pretty fast and putting out a lot of movies. And um, oh, oh hey. Oh, there's that girl. She's from um, yeah, the witch. That's a that's all about witchcraft too. That must have how they got their start. I'm telling you, man. That's it, a creepy movie as well. It's a very I dark. I didn't watch it, but I, you know, I saw the poster. I was like, uh, uh I'm not watching that one. Uh, but it ends with it's the same thing as Midsummer. They they like the darkness. This one ends where yeah, mm -hmm. like they're entranced and enthralled by the evil, and they I, enjoy it. I think they had another one called Lobster. 
my friend was telling me about that. Um, my friend that do some of my review, movie reviews with me, Leticia, um, she told me about that movie and uh, how weird it was and how horrifying it was in the sense of once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Okay, it's just weirdness. But obviously, yeah, they that, have some strange films. Oh yeah, they're all A twenty four films. Yeah, Tusk too, Tusk. Yeah, wow. uh, yeah. I haven't seen all these films, and obviously, I said I didn't watch some. So, um, but at the same time, I'm telling you, once the audience I'm talking to now, once you find all the themes and understand the themes and the symbolism, it can't go over your head. Uh, somebody said hereditary. Yes, that's a that's hereditary. A, that was the b movie before Midsummer. Yeah, and did they? Tons of occultism. I'm not even sure if they did a hereditary. Uh, let me check out who did hereditary because I heard that one was in your face witchcraft. <laughs> no, it was. I did. It's the same director as Midsummer. Oh, so yeah. all right. Let's see. Hereditary, IMDb. Let me hold on a second. Let me put this back up here. Uh, director Ari Esther. Um, let me go back to this and do a search here to see if. Oh, come on now, they're the ones that did all right, right here. All right, so it's very interesting, man. I I I've been avoiding this. What's going on? I've been avoiding this film company ever after I saw ever after I saw a couple of films of theirs. I'm like, come on, the theme is always something weird, and oh. Uh, the book. Ari Aster, that's the guy. All right. So that's the screenplay book. Oh, come on now. This yeah, is see, there's the bird head, all that spoon. Yeah. All from there, yeah. 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 Some people that went and saw this movie said they weren't at the same afterwards. It was just that bad. It's um, really dark. It's mm -hmm. very dark. Yeah. So yeah, I you know I try to I don't talk about this movie company a lot because I never really decided to actually do a whole pro program on them. But some of their their movies seem you know innocent in a sense from the way you see the trailer. But then all right. of a sudden in the middle of the movie, it's like watching a Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh uh, yeah, you got some violence, you got some cursing, and you know some. And then by the middle of the movie, like oh my goodness, what's going on here? Or the right. last fifteen minutes, you know. As the same thing with these. Uh, uh, you see the themes. Look at this. Oh, this is the witch again. There's the witch. Oh, this, yeah. girl, this girl uh, was just in The New Mutants. Oh, uh, and she plays some sort of witch that uh, goes on the astral plane or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a separate show on this, but well, it's interesting you bring all that stuff because it's all in the present, right? It's not even something from the past. It's right. I mean, people are being exposed to all of this stuff. Yeah, in 2020. Yeah, and this this movie is on the Demon Bear storyline, which is a part of the comic book. Uh, it's pretty much about a, a demonic bear chasing her down. Her power is to be pretty much manipulate reality and it grows on your deepest fear, okay? Right. So uh, that same girl, like I said, is in this movie. Not that it, the problem is her, <laughs> but the uh, she, she's playing another dark part is what I'm trying to say. Where are these? There they go. There she is. Uh, it was kind of boring, actually, but um, th this girl here, she is a werewolf, and they, they try their best to make you like her, and her and her... I don't know if it's like this in the comic book, this one right here, can't remember her name. These two get into a relationship, if you know what I mean. Uh, this guy is uh, the, like a flame, flame on guy, Sunspot, I think his name is. Uh, forgot her name, but she's the witch. And he is um, Cannonball. He gets to thr thrust his body all over the place <laughs> and punch it through walls and whatnot, through kinetic energy. So anyway, it still has the occult themes Animal spirits, blah, 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 blah. But let's go back where we intended to go. And that is where you want to go with this movie thing. Uh, you want to go Kenneth Anger or? Sure, we can talk about Kenneth Anger all the way to the present. I mean, that guy goes all the way back to early Crowley, New Parsons, New Parsons' wife. Still around, still alive. There's a recent documentary about him. 
Yeah. I mean, his real name is Angermeyer. I think, uh, you know, he made Lucifer Rising and uh, some of these other early. In Martin Scorsese said he was an influence for him. He kind of made one of the first music videos, so he's a little bit of a groundbreaker. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know he's tied to the Manson family because and they never really talk about it. It's very strange. But he lived with Bobby Bouzelet, who was one of the first people convicted in the murder of Hinman that mm. took place in Topanga Canyon. But he, Hinman was supposedly murdered on the command of Manson. Mm. Okay. So he's definitely part of the whole Manson story. But nobody ever really can make that connection, which I think is a mistake. But that's yeah. him with Lucifer on there. And he's still around. He's in uh, this one, if you want to really, I don't know if you want an audience to show it, but it's in a video called, they're doing an occult ritual. Yeah. It's called Love in the Old Days. Maybe if you pop it up, it's not too obvious, but I wouldn't show it in its entirety. Yeah, because I, I, one of my videos already got taken down. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. You, you guys have to look that up on your own. <laughs> but it's James Franco uh, was the director. So these guys still, you know, James yeah. Franco's around. So this guy's still influential. Yeah, friends James. With, yeah, yeah, friends with Isn't the into Satanism? Pardon me? Isn't James Franco into Satanism? Well, that's the rumor. I've never considered the rumor. You know more than I do. I don't know. That's what I've I mean. just seen a couple of things that are very strange. I have no way to prove it right now unless I did some deep research, but I've seen some strange things. Is, is affiliations. I heard uh, that he was supposed to meet up for some black thing, seance. I don't know what it was. And he didn't show up because he was starting to become a little publicly known. So he didn't show up for it. Oh, right. That took place. Okay. So that was Crowley's ritual Bartzabel. It was called okay. the Bartzabel Working, and it took place in Venice. Uh, and the guy who did the, the ritual is a kind of henchman or sidekick or acolyte of Kenneth Anger. His name is Brian Brian Bishop. Or uh, look, type in Bartzabel, B A R T Z E B E L, Venice. It'll pop up. Brian Bishop, I think his name. Um, yeah, so that's not it. But that's the the one over there with the red in the red. In the yes. pop that's it. Brian uh, Butler is his name. So he's really he's actually in this loving the old days video I was talking about. He's yeah, in there with anger. But yeah, so he Franco was supposed to partake in that. So I've heard that. I've also heard other rumors. I can't verify that he's a huge fan of uh, Levian Satanism and the number nine. He has tattoos on his body. Okay. Well, I don't know. That was from uh, Crazy Days and Nights. But he's been uh, implicated in some very strange stuff. That's Brian Butler. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. That may not even be his real name because the B of Brian Butler is a 56, right? So mm -hmm. you have a full numerological thing going on there. Brian Butler, five and a six. Pentagram, hexagram, just like Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, Tyler Durden, right? So these guys are all magicians. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You can see that they kind of play those same games once you see those correlations. Yeah. Um, hey, you, sometimes, you know, the the real story never comes out until either after they're dead or, you know, sometime you know, decades after that. Uh, uh, that's true. More a book or whatnot. Um, this is interesting stuff here. On the subject of, uh, if we go back to Christopher Lee, he was in a show with Sammy Davis Jr. called mm -hmm. My Devil or something like that. I mean, it was a stone cold kind of like a uh, Christopher Lee. Type in Christopher Lee, Sammy Davis Jr. I can't remember the name of it, but it was it was like Hello Satan was the name of it. And I think Chris, there it is right there. Poor Devil, that's right. So mm -hmm. that was the series featuring Christopher Lee. So you can see, and you see... Sammy Davis with LaVey and Michael Aquino. Yeah. So this guy was a part of the Brat Pack, part of that whole crew or group. Right. He was uh, an outright kind of uh, occultist. Mm hmm. It goes there. Yeah. Oh. So you can watch those videos in there. Yeah. Christopher Lee and Poor Devil. Pretty remarkable. So um, you can just see these connections. And Christopher Lee, there's kind of a famous, uh, well, not that famous, but there's a video of him talking about his occult literature and his rumor of supposedly having a huge oh, so library. He was into this crap too. Yeah, but he actually gave a warning. He said you can lose your mind and soul. So mm -hmm. I think he was actually either from experience or from what he had seen.
yeah what the occult does to people so mm -hmm. um but i mean you can just see like people say oh there's no such thing as satanism and it's like it goes all the way back to the beginning of film yeah you know? if you yeah. look at metropolis there's like uh there's a pentagram involved in that and it's about transhumanism and things like yeah. that so these things people are thinking about them in different angles um in fact i'll pull that up in a second uh but yeah. you're mentioning some interesting names that i'm um, I forgot where to go back to. Oh, so, so you had the Rat Pack. Oh, this right. guy, this guy. What's his name again? This guy. That's Michael Aquino. So he broke from Levee and started the Temple of Set. Yes, and he just died, right? Like, That's uh, correct. He supposedly died this year. Yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, bring him up by himself here. And that's he wrote uh, the book of coming forth by night, which is really long. It's almost unbearable to read, but he talks about his influence and his influence with LeVay. And, you know, and he was this is a psychological warfare officer. Yeah. Uh, who I think was working in the Bush administration with a guy named Paul Villelli. And uh, they wrote a book together called Mind War. It's from it's called from PSYOP to Mind War. Uh, psycho psychological operations for the future or something like that. But it's an incredible book because they don't believe it's like you would think that there's a psyop, right? Where somebody commits a psyop and then finish. But his idea was like, never let up, just can constantly go into a warfare situation where you're constantly applying psychological operations. Yeah. And, and so through, to, through very deceitful means using electronics and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you type in from PSYOP to Mind War? Okay. Give me a second here. Should pop up. Let me, um, there's too much going on. <laughs> uh, from PSYOP to Mind War. So this guy is a decorated officer. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think he was a colonel. I think, I mean, he rose up in the ranks. He had a significant rank. His mother was a very was like a real super genius. She graduated from Stanford, so he does. Yeah, so maybe you can pop up cycle that one on the top left. Boom. Sorry, up to my yeah. Click on that for me, will you? Yeah. So you see Colonel Paul Valelli and Major Michael Aquino, 1980. So it goes way back in the mm. Presidio, and there's all kinds of stories about the Presidio. There was actually like a huge pedophile scandal, and some people tied Aquino to it. And uh, there's a guy who talks about the Presidio because he worked there. His name is, I can't remember. He's on, he's kind of like in the alternate media. Yeah. I can't remember his name now, but uh, yeah, he was around. I mean, he, he lived very close to the Presidio. He was on kind of like uh, Knob Hill. People knew where this guy lived, Aquino. Yeah. He was right in the heart of San Francisco. So, so he had uh, any influence on Hollywood that you know of? Well, that's a good question. I mean, he clearly he's there with Sammy Davis Jr. I don't know who else might have been. There's a there's pictures of him with other kind of. There's a guy by the name of Harry Harryhausen who was kind of a, the, one of the early um, claymation or special effects guys who was like, pictured with this guy, yeah. pictured with Aquino. So there's some like I've seen that old those old pictures, but. Uh, this guy Valelli, who's who wrote a paper with Aquino, was like a contributor to Fox News. So he's on Fox News all the time. You can type in Valelli, Fox News, it'll just all the videos will pop up. So this guy, I mean, you, that's the whole thing. Is like, why are you watching TV news? You're literally being hammered with yeah. military psyops. Yeah, I can tell people that NL, NLP, all this no. stuff. They're just raping people's brains and minds. Why do even people reference CNN, Fox News? I don't get it. Yeah, it's yeah. they're not credible. I right. mean, Weekly World News or something else is definitely more credible than the corporate media. Like, I don't understand MSNBC is, exists. Yeah, like, how dumb? I mean, I'm, <laughs> how can people watch it? It's paid for by Bill Gates. That's right. The MSN. Yeah. Why are, you, why are you watching this? This is your. They, I think that CNN. I bet their ratings are trash. The real ratings is like playing in the background of bars, and yeah, I mean. Yeah. It's, it's garbage. It's total. It's just they all get their orders from wherever the top is. Um, yes, they do. Yes, they do. And you can see Fox News just turned on Trump, like just like that. Right. Massive frauds taking place. 
it's the biggest one of the biggest scandals in our country's history is this the changing of votes in a in a software and they're just saying there's no evidence of fraud wisconsin yeah. had 87 percent of its population vote right okay 87 percent. the standard <laughs> is about 65 percent yeah so it's five yeah. standard deviation statistical deviations from the norm norm it's point nine 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 percent possible it's like yeah. one out of ten million and that's just one state so then if you put all the other states together the whole thing that what's really bad is that this may have exposed fraud that's been going on for decades but mm -hmm. trump got cheated man so yeah. yeah and if this if they if they get away with this the republic's gone their next ones will be cheated on there'll be no turning back yeah absolutely Don't anything in the future so yeah. the Christians who are out there worried about the beast system or something terrible happening, wake up. It happens now. It's happening yeah. right now. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, there's some stuff I just can't say, but yeah. I'll just put it like this. Um, Trump gets in office, dude, we've, we've, we've avoided a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. Biden uh, will be a catastrophe. And, um, time for good men to come to the aid of their country it's really we're in a constitutional real uh nightmare right now so yeah a real there people don't understand it's real yeah. <laughs> and the war with china is real real, real. <laughs> so uh, the they find those ballots uh they find ballots came from china the whole country has to turn on a dime for anyway mm -hmm. everybody has to be on board so yeah. uh, these are very perilous times you may not feel it or sense it but these yeah, are very man. perilous times and the very people that biden's surrounding himself with are warmongers. So mm -hmm. you're going back into kind of like Bush type of era again, which mm -hmm. coming from a different side. I mean, the guy said, made speeches about the new world order. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, on, he's been in Washington for 50 years. So if they steal this election, every American should be ready for heavy, heavy turbulence. Oh, not yeah. be good. It's not going to be good if Trump, what will happen is the Supreme Court are the adults. So they're going to look over everything and mm -hmm. they're going to say this is fraud. And the left is going to go berserk. But I think that eventually, if it makes it to the Supreme Court in the next month or two, um, mm -hmm. that'll save the country. But if not, yeah, you can just, uh, yeah, I mean, you're there. I truly believe the left, the people who are, who listen to NPR, who are stupid enough to listen to NPR and yeah. um, some of these other things, truly believe that this was a non fraud election because yeah. they've been hammered with from PSYOP to Mind War. But what I'm just saying on their own is more like so anyway, don't give me started. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the the stuff I'm showing right here on the screen, people, if you haven't heard of it, I used to practice some of this stuff, okay? And this is the simplest way to explain mind control to you. Neural or this they say natural language processing. In other places, a neural linguistic processing, and there's another one. So, see, neural linguistic process is basically. I know it's going to sound weird when I say it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's witchcraft. You use the words to have an outcome. You control people's thoughts and whatnot by the words that you use. Anyone that's an ex-witch will tell you this is what they do. Okay, <laughs> it's not just about uh, putting frog legs in a pot. All right, you you take the words fashion them in a certain way like say for instance progressive progressive is not a bad word it's the intent behind the word that's the problem right and right. so they'll use words like that they'll use they'll continue uh with words like say new normal we've been hearing that a lot that's that's they're brainwashing you when you keep hearing peaceful protest they're brainwashing you when you hear there is no evidence for voter fraud they are brainwashing right. <laughs> They're definitely yeah. brainwashing you. And it's so the, really movie, hmm? the movies it's do really the same thing. Uh, they'll put certain suggestive words. Not every movie, maybe, you know, but there's a lot of witches in, in Hollywood. So there you have it. Just, you know, if you were able to see the percentage, you'd probably scream. So um, subliminal, um, sub subliminal languages, the, you have the symbolism, um, you have the people that are. This it goes very deep. Okay, I'm not going to get into all that. Let's just keep on the road. <laughs> no, but it's important because that's part of the occult Hollywood. That's part of the Matrix. Is these guys are using mind control, yeah, adjustability, 
and all kinds of tricks, but they can't tell you. They can't show you what's going on behind the curtain. But I think that this PSYOP to Mind War, Aquino to Valeli is a very important connection because these people on Fox News <laughs> think that they're not getting mind raped and they're just being clowned to the yeah. 10th degree, like just an ultimate, ultimate clown job. On, on you for watching Fox News and thinking these, they literally had, I mean, people, Tucker Carlson may be a really nice, good guy. He literally said, give Hunter Biden a pass. The guy was selling the country out. He's a bag man. He's a crazy, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they do. They have somebody carry the bag. If you look at a lot of these people in Washington, D.C., they're having their family members launder their money or take money for people. That yeah. makes it back to them. It's not that complex. Mm -hmm. But for Hunter Biden to just give him a pass, and right. then people just say, oh, this guy's, geez, I really trust Hunter. I mean, I really trust Tucker Carlson. You're out of your mind, man. Just a lot of stuff going on that people are just not aware of. And this movie right here uh, kind of explains it all. You know, there's somebody behind the curtain. You think he saw, it's just, just a small few people, right? right? And they're, you know, promising you all these good things. He's just, you know, it's an it's a illusion. Right, it's an illusion. Do you want to, uh, have you ever seen, what's the um, Wizard of Oz? With, this is a great occult link that nobody knows. It's the Wizard of Oz with Michael Jackson where he plays the, the, Wiz. the Wiz. Can you bring up the Wiz, the last sequence where they're in between the Twin Towers in New York City dancing? It's incredible. It's really just an incredible occult moment. The final scene right there in green, they're literally dancing in front of the Twin Towers and, and Crowley's system, Oz translates to 77. And that's kind of one of the primary Crowley numbers. And it was in the Flight 77 in, in the uh, 2001 event. But it's incredible. And they're dancing, actually, this circle that's in the very center there of the Wiz. That's right. It's called the, um, the Twin Towers. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. It's, it has a funny name. It's called the, uh, I can't remember. But it's like this uh, brass thing that's, uh, there's incredible ties. They feature it in Fight Club, but they also have all these brass domes. It's called the Spherical Karyatid. Oh, and um, yeah, you'll see it right there in the center. Perfect, yes. You see the Oz, and it just ties right into the whole 9-11 uh, event. It's off the charts. Wow. And that's, yeah. the, that's the really the final sequence when he makes it to the Emerald Kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is where the Emerald Kingdom is, is right where the ground zero was in 9 11. That's interesting. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, he has another book called Prophet of Evil. I'll show it real quick. Uh, let me get over here and do like that. And uh, we'll explain some of the stuff he's talking about uh, 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 this way. All right, there we go. That's my old one. That's the old one. Over. <laughs> yeah, I've actually turned it into a six point six by nine. But, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, it wasn't a tough one. I had to reformat the whole thing. The original nine on there. There's there's original copies of that around that were all printed out from my printer. Like I even have it. I didn't have a Squarespace, and uh, so when I made a book, I just made it the same thing as a piece of paper. I wasn't even thinking about bookshelves or anything like that. But I wanted to kind of. You know, make sure it fits in a bookshelf now. I think six by nine is the way to go. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, because, you know, bigger anyway. sheet, more expensive. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that's the Wiz, and that's in the 70s or 80s? 80s? I think it's in the 80s, but it's like a foreshadowing. It's a foreshadowing of 9-11 right there. Yeah. Like yeah. they knew the occult meaning of the entire, of the Twin Towers, right? Right. So... They knew people knew people knew 9 11 was going to happen, maybe not how it was going to play out, but they knew it was going to happen, yeah. And I think that that's one of the elements that foreshadows that is like it's off the chart. And then you see the picture of George W. Bush and proper prophet of evil wearing the 77 mm -hmm. uh, hat, like the occult hat, and and his aircraft carrier was 77 too. So you see, these guys are sending signals, they know. And George Bush, I mean, his famous New World Order speech was 9-11-1990, right? So he he had it all figured out down to the 11 years to the date to give that speech. Yeah. You know, what was going to happen in 11 years. 
and in some ways he's just a front man for people who are more powerful than himself but yeah. these guys are very clever you know? they have many more to be done yeah i mean uh for people like uh that are skeptics or you just don't get this and it sounds totally like conspiracy theory all you what if you don't know the system how it works numerology the symbols and all this stuff the signs and all that you won't get it at all sorry there's no way for you to just get it at first glance but once the the research is done for you you might you might want to go check it out um because there are things uh there are real false flags there are real um occult rituals being done and you know one of the big occult um rituals to me are Horror, horror movies, period. Just period. Because it's all about the shedding of innocent blood or the shedding of children, blood or something. Blood, 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 blood. <laughs> and that, most of these occult rituals either have the symbolic blood or the real blood. So, and we love getting scared by it, but uh, it's totally demonic and has nothing to do with God if you are a Christian. So I, I, I have an exchange. We can go right from the whiz to the good shepherd because it shows these guys are going coming up in a cult ritual. So the good shepherd was with Matt Damon and Robert De Niro. And, um, you know, it was really kind of about skull and bones in the intel community and features a ritual in the good shepherd of these guys being inducted into skull and bones. Yeah, you know, I there's think. face masks, swords, the whole ritualized thing. I don't know if they would show that. If you type in "good shepherd skull and bone ritual," there literally is a sequence of Matt Damon being tapped, which is how they get brought into the system. They get tapped on the shoulder, inducted into it. Yeah, you can see. I think some of that ritual is there. Um, 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 but they actually feature. It was very smart. They knew a lot because Skull and Bones has an island community far north that a lot of people don't know about. It's on an island in uh, Lake Superior or something like that on the opposite side from Toronto. So that's kind of like where they would go. And not, not a lot of people know that, but they featured scenes from that in The Good Shepherd. So you could tell uh, how smart these guys were. They were really trying to tell you, tell the people something. And it, it was kind of a movie that wasn't highly uh, advertised. But they were very smart. And the way that the film ends, you watch it, they're literally in like a club with high back. There's the skull and bone sequence right there yes, on that circle. Yeah. Because so, the skull, the tomb is actually two tiered, so people can see on the circle. So they had it down very well. But the way that the movie ends is they're in a recreation of the inside of the Bohemian Club. So it's really, they were smart. Whoever did the, the sets for that were very, very clever. Yeah, and he, wasn't he just doing the ceremony of Hiram of Biff right there? Something like that, yeah. And some the guy by the name of Ron Rosenbaum actually was snuck into one of the initiation rituals, and uh, he filmed it. So there's actually on the, yeah, that's it right there. There's actually an initiation ritual that somebody saw from a distance because they were curious about it, but mm -hmm. they have secret libraries there, and then I thought I think that these guys, uh, you know, it's intergenerational, so these guys uh, probably read a lot of occult manuals, books, all kinds of stuff like that. And on the subject of mind control, it's actually interesting because in Children of the Beast, I have a sequence about um, Marilyn Manson, and the books on his bookshelf were about the occult and mind control. I think it was uh, a uh, but yeah. No, The Good Shepherd's very, I think it's an important work, I think, for people to yeah, how elite occultism functions. That star right there, I can't remember what, what it's called, but I know it's something um, occultic. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and it's funny but, that it's not right on it. So <laughs> I think that this figure on the left was supposed to to um, be a kind of a, a symbol or symbolize George Bush Senior. Okay. Okay. Why am I here? Okay. Anyway, so um, okay, so okay, that's so we went from this to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I don't know what, what do you want to talk about. Uh, uh, then we can go to JFK because J. Oliver Stone knows all the occult stuff too. He comes from Yale. He went to Yale, and so I included him in Occult Hollywood Volume Two, which you can see on Vimeo if you are interested in watching some of the stuff. But 
He has the obelisk in the back background, Oliver Stone. Uh, yeah, there's just some interesting things. Yeah. 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 I, I think he was trying to warn us, right? Like, I think so. Yeah. To a certain extent. He's exposing what went on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these kind of guys, the guys from School and Bells are the kind of people who tell JFK. Basically, mm -hmm. yeah. kind of a right one. Right. Coup really it was really a coup to change, in my opinion, change the whole country. And they were they're very angry with JFK for a lot of reasons. And mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of somewhat relevant today because JFK's presidency was supposedly due to the stuffing of ballots in the Chicago districts. So the daily machine in Chicago supposedly stuffed the machines and that that tipped the balance to JFK. And so some of these right wingers, he was very forward. I think JK was very forward thinking. There were a lot of issues there. But he was very he he blew the Bay of Pigs and alienated a lot of the old school super powerful guys. And they just they just shot him on November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. Mm -hmm. My opinion. That's really and I, so I think that seeing that kind of history is important. Because yeah. the left, yeah. I think the left really shows I think that I mean I don't think any of it's right. I don't think all of all of stones right wrong on JFK, but they don't. They never got into why the right was so angry with with JFK and why they want rid of him. Right. Uh, somebody said muffled sound. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, there's 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 something in the background coming back through me. Okay, because I'm hearing that echo. I don't know if it's from you, but I'll take I'll take my audio while we keep talking. Uh, yeah. So, what about Stephen King? Stephen King, I don't know that much about King. I don't, um, I've never really traced. I know that he had an, obviously a horror pedigree, but I don't know how much of the occult he knows. Do you know? I, I'm actually doing research on him for my documentary, so I haven't gotten all the way there yet. But what I hear or whatever is that he was on either Coke or some other drug, and that's how he used to get some of his inspiration. That all that tells me is is he was in contact with spirits. That's all it tells me, because that's the usual method. Either you know some sort of form of altered state of consciousness or whatnot, and uh, it's either you got drinking, you got smoking, you got sniffing, you got dancing, you got cutting yourself, and all these diff different uh, ways of getting into altered state of consciousness. So that's all I have right now. But uh, based on some of his writings, like uh, one of the movies I I picked up uh, put on the po on the the thumbnail is at cemetery. I didn't watch the new one, but I'm familiar with the old. This is the poster I put up. I heard the new one was just God awful, <laughs> but um, it goes into occult themes, you know, raising the dead to whatever, uh, including animals. And so that goes into zombies that goes into ancestor worship and other things. So it, 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 the themes of the occult are all in his books. There's no way around it. So, and I hear that they have like writers guild that teach some of this stuff as well. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So you wonder why, you know, some of these people, they have such acute occult uh, stuff in their programming in their movies. They have to know something. There's no, there's no way around it. And you don't, you just don't play what play around with this stuff and not have some deep knowledge. There's no way I can't, I can't see it. You know, I so um so this was one I didn't again I didn't watch the movie um I don't know if anybody in the audience watched the movie uh somebody in the audience said Sean uh, Sean at Priest said sixteen pointed star Virginia Sun a Macedonia Sun Star yeah there you go um that was in the uh, Sun Star right that makes sense yeah uh, one thing I do know about Stephen King is that his character in the Stand. Uh, was wearing a smiley face. So how does that get in there? I don't remember it in the book. Right. The, the guy's name is Randall Flagg. If you type in Randall Flagg, and they just redid it. And I think it's coming out next month with Whoopi Goldberg. We did that. Do this? Uh, no, but go. Uh, yeah, I haven't I'm, seen it. I'm trying to show you something before we go there. Okay, okay cool. We missed oh, it because I didn't do the review yet. This is okay. in, in the New Mutants what, that we talked about earlier. Um, and then afterwards, they start looking like this. Right, and these are cool. these are the monsters that are actually after the the witch girl I told you about. This one, this this girl right here, this girl right here. 
they're after her. It's like they used to terrorize her when she was young or something like that. So anyway, uh, who you want me to look up? Randall something? Yeah, type R-A-N-D-A-L-L, and then the next word is flag, F-L-A-G-G. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, so pick. So if you can get a picture of that guy's lapel or lapel, you'll see the smiley face. Okay. You have to kind of get a bigger picture. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, Let's see, let me try to set the settings to large. Let's see what comes up here. Uh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. And it's so the that, same. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when that movie was made, but I remember it coming out in the eighties. If I'm not correct, right? So, like, you can see this idea. The underground ideas are there, pre-internet. Yeah. And it's the same exact um, smiley face from the Watchmen. And we can talk about more. We can. I mean, there's a lot. There's, a, yeah, there's just a lim limitless amount of occult information. So that's yeah. the new stand. Yeah, that's, it. that's the new one. I didn't watch that one. Um, let me see. I don't, I don't think it's out until next month, but I might be wrong. Oh, okay. All right. I try to nowadays. I try to avoid everything Stephen King. <laughs> I used to be into all those movies, Carrie and all. Not Carrie. He didn't do Carrie, I think. But um, Christine and whatnot. Um, when was this? When did this movie come out? It's not even here. You can talk about uh, The Shining and stuff like that. Like that. Oh, yeah, The Shining. Yes. Yeah. yes. So you've got all kinds of ESP going on there. Indi he likes Indian burial grounds. So that's the same thing that ties Pet Cemetery to. The Shining, so mm -hmm. you got all that stuff, uh, and yeah, haunted houses, demon possession, yeah. blood, uh, mm -hmm. hallways, <laughs> a psychopath. Uh, basically, basically, yeah. it seemed like he was demon possessed or something. Um, let's see, look at that. Come on, really? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, they have. They also have this maze right at the end, which is kind of like. Um, Psychological maze of the mind, you know. Right. I think I've seen that in other contexts. There goes the blood. That's the end. There's the blood. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's another TV game. Yeah. The maze has a lot of occult connotations. I haven't looked deep into it, but it's 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 there. Uh, the the um the show that Steven Spielberg produced. Uh, okay, here it is. Ready Player One. The shining. There we go. Google knows what I want. Son of a rat. So anyway, they they mimicked The Shining. Uh, this is in virtual reality, and there you go. This is for this is for PG thirteen, by the way. Wow, that doesn't look PG thirteen to me. The Overlook is the name of the hotel that they stayed at, so that's why it's called the Overlook. Yeah. So and they're showing The Shining. Right, and um, you know they go in. It seems sort of innocent. This is a in real life. She's a lesbian, and she looks like a man in in, in virtual reality. And so there's a sequence where she goes into a, a bathroom, and there's a woman in a tub. This this right here, and this person turns into like a zombie-like creature, and then you know, but she's you know uh, she's flirting with the the person, but you know, like like I said, you know, in real life she's something else. She's not a man. Um, so that's that, and um, turns into a zombie like creature, but yeah, so they had a whole sequence in this movie that mimics the shining, and it, it, it did get a little creepy, man. Uh, this is part of the sequence here where they start dancing with um, zombie like creatures or whatnot. Um, ready, ready Player One, uh, I won't say it's a great movie, it's not the worst, but you know, a lot of occult themes. Uh, like here we have wizards or whatnot. This is the game master, the guy that actually yeah, made the skeleton it. key is occultism, yeah. The key that unlocks secrets and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um I mean, you know, not a bad movie to check out, but you know, it's all over the place in this movie, man. All of the occult themes and whatnot. Uh Steven Spielberg is just he's a part of that whole system too, um, for people that don't realize that. Yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah, Michael Jackson, all kinds, Steven Spielberg, yeah. He's got some interesting associations. Yeah. So, um, and the whole virtual world concept, that's that's where uh, some of the new occult themes are are lurking in video games. And we covered oh, some yeah. of 
weeks ago. And man, I've seen it my whole life, but uh, it's getting even darker, just like the TV shows. So anyway, um, well, who are some of the other culprits here from the past? We, we Crowley's everywhere, so we have to spend too much time on him. Uh, let's go Alan Moore. Yeah, let's go Alan Moore, because a lot of people want to try Alan Moore. How do you spell his name? Here we go. All right. So Alan Moore, this guy, he comes up a lot on my show. So let's just go there. Let's let's look up some of his films. Uh, actually, it's more like his comic books that are turned into films. Right. Many don't know about. All right. So. All right. We have V for Vendetta. Is this symbol right here that everybody loves to wear as the sign of truth? This is really Satan. Okay. Uh V for Vendetta was a movie that is pretty much has Gnostic themes in it. So the woman in the film is Eve. And this guy is the guy that helps her, helps to bring her enlightenment. The the Antichrist in the movie is really God. But you have to know Gnosticism and how to break it down. It's need to just and and in the comic book for V for Vendetta, there is a tribute to Crowley. Right. He mentions do what thou will should be the whole of the law twice. Yeah. Let's see. Book and put Crowley. That's how you spell it, right? Yeah. Oops. I Put an F there. Sorry, guys. I don't type well. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> Where is it here? Uh, they they had a, like a young Crowley in there. If I could find the picture here. Well, there's a young Crowley in From Hell. Maybe that's what you're referencing. Uh, young Crowley from there's Hell. A, yeah, in From Hell, there's Crow. There's a literal like young magician Crowley. Oh, it's From Hell. Okay. From Hell. So yeah. You there it is right there. If you go, but just back a second, I just saw a glimpse. Okay. You go. Uh, there it is. The very center that he's talking, but that's from hell in the black and white. This? No, brother. Uh, scroll down. That's not it. There's a little kid right there with a hat. Okay. That's so it. I know, that's I know about it, but there's another one in color. And it might be from this book. It might be from this book. But either way, his whole thing is black magic. Um, your words are um, spells. If you write, you literally write. It's a spell. He also did. Um, I think he did the Dark Knight, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah, he did, he did the joke, Killing Joke or whatever. I think it was Killing Joke. All these dark themes that people enjoy a lot. <laughs> um, let's see here. We got V for Vendetta, League of Extraordinary Men. Right, which I think has a Crowley figure in it. I think in one of the sequences, there's like a Crowley figure in the, if I remember, it's like in, there's like a blimp or something like that. Yeah, let me see here. Let me look real quick. See, Close. there's a do it how well should be the whole law. Let me see. Right there on the far right. There it is, right there. Right there, yeah. yeah. That's me from Vendetta. He also mentioned something that's kind of a cultic that I know I've seen in Crowley, which yeah. is, the five V's, V, 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 which is See? by way of truth, I shall gain power or something like that. But he mentions that on his chair, the character. Yeah. And now you see all these truthers out there with this mask. It's Satan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I just laugh sometimes, man. Let me see. Uh, Alan Moore books. Oh, so another big one is Watchmen. Right. He, he, Author of Watchmen, and that is where we see the smiley face. Um, uh, what's the name? What's the dude's name? That word of smiley face. Uh, the, the comedian. Com comedian, yeah. Uh, this is the old version here. This is the guy that becomes a godlike figure. This is the. This is Mr. Man, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, this guy right here. I can't remember his name, but he's he's a vision of Al Alistair Crowley. Um. Goodness gracious, why get a big uh, I can't remember. He has all kinds of occultism. I forgot his name. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Alan Moore did Swamp Thing. This is goes back into Earth Worship and the Green Man and right. <sighs> just weird themes. Okay. Um, let's see. We didn't come up on a legal extraordinary gentleman. Yeah. And that has vampires, spies, whatever. 
Uh, oh, so before we move from Watchmen, let's bring this up again. Uh, Watchmen, the TV show, which is loosely based on the book. Um, uh, TV show. All right, so this series right here, we talked about the other day on another, on another breakdown or something. Uh, this, it has a lot of race baiting in it. Um, and they have cops that, that wear a bunch of masks like here, you know, hey, well, look at COVID. But anyway, it has nothing to do with COVID, but it's just interesting that this stuff was like this in the, in the TV show. So anyway, it, it, this lady by the end, if you don't want spoilers, check out now. But this lady by the end, she she falls in love with Dr. Manhattan. She doesn't necessarily know it's him at in the beginning. And he's a black man. He's disguised as a black man. She falls in love. They get married. Um, but he was trying to basically give her something so later on she could become like him, a god. Okay, so it's all about transhumanism. So she's she's into that. But the the people that are pretty much um, the the storyline of the the TV show, they are really into transhumanism and they are the secret uh, this guild or whatever, and they're building a machine to cause a bunch of stuff to happen to humankind but for one person they will sacrifice humanity to become a god that's pretty much the premise and they like i said a bunch of race baiting in it and blah 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 blah. so this is the guy that we were trying to point out earlier and um he is a, a picture of alistair crowley okay so but in, what's the name of the character i don't remember i don't remember man i can't anybody in the in the comments if you know the the uh name of his character Please let us know. I can't remember for nothing. Um, let's see here. There he is again. Ozymandias, that's right. Um, as a, yes, Azamandias. There we go. There we go. Yeah. And what does that name actually mean? Is it just oh, made It goes back to a famous poem called Ozymandias. It's about uh, somebody, I think it was by Blake or Shelley. I can't remember. He sees like this statue. And it says once great here was Ozymandias. It's a, it's a literary reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So uh, yeah, so this is the guy that uh, this is when um, Doctor Manhattan is re re revealing himself as you know the the godlike being and whatnot, and he's trying to protect her. But there's a whole plan again of her becoming a god and whatnot because he could see past, present, and future and blah blah blah. They're trying to act like he's god, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was by the poem by Percy Bysshe Shelley. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Ah, uh, okay. So another person pretending that they're God, <laughs> right? That's what it sounds like. Well, it's actually kind of a, a sacrilegious offense, right? If Christ is the King of Kings. Right, exactly what I'm talking about there. Yes. Um, so that's Watchmen uh, coming from Alan Moore, same person who did V for Vendetta. Vendetta, Vendetta, Vendetta. <laughs> um, he, he did. Somebody is is talking about uh, Promethea. Promethea was one of his comic books as well, like based on Prometheus. Right. D r o m e t h e a. I think it's P r. Yeah. Okay. That's this one I've never seen. That's just that's just stock full of occultism. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a massive occult. Yeah. You know, Stuff. So this, I've, they, they have. I, not, to my knowledge, they haven't made a movie out of this. No. Okay. I think it's one of his lesser known works. Mm. Extra. All right. Uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. They did make a movie out of this. Um. This is all you see a symbolism up there. Okay. So this this guy, uh, it's like he's take uh, his influence from Crowley is going into his stuff, and then he's going to in influence another generation, as he already has influenced another generation. Right. Uh, and you know the, the 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 characters within this, you could see the the dark magic or whatnot. You got the mummy, you got the vampire, you got all these weirdos. <laughs> At the time when this came out, I was into the movie or whatnot, even though the movie wasn't great. But now I'm like, uh, brother, forget about it. There was another yeah, one. Once you, once you know the occult, occult influences on some of these shows, they're, uh, makes you, it makes you less inclined to watch them. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, I can't forget. This is important. Uh, his Batman run. Batman run. Is I believe the Dark Knight. Alan Moore. He he did a lot of Batman comics. Uh, like you said, he did the Killing Joke. Uh, is another Alan Moore. DC Universe. Once you start to see what these guys are into, you know that they're gonna put it in the comic books. And even not, it's not that the comic books didn't have this stuff in it before, but they're just putting their own little twist on it. And what you start to do as the, the the person that's not aware or the person that is gets engrossed by this stuff, you start to take on the characteristic, believe it or not. So just be careful of how much love you put towards these things. Um, I know not everybody. I know because I used to read this stuff, and I, I I didn't go into the occult. I'm not saying everybody, but you know we have people that are prone to this stuff. So he is definitely into. Um, well, he's actually stated he's half into comics and half into the occult. So yeah. if he's made all those comic books, he's done tons of occult. He's he has this kind of spirit god, the snake that he worships, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty incredible. Yeah, uh, and he passed away, right? Still alive. Still alive? I thought he passed away. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No, no more still alive. I think he's in his 70s. Okay. And he, he called himself now a black magician or something like that, right? He called himself a, a magician, yes. He's 66 years old. 66 years old. And here's one of, is, is this a biography or autobiography? Anyway, this is about Lance Parkin, but it's talking about the extraordinary life of Alan Moore. You can do all the research, guys, and look into this this person. You'll see exactly what we're talking about. They, they have a couple of video interviews um, on YouTube with him saying exactly what we're saying. So don't be surprised. It is real. And so, yeah, he has all kinds of magical rings on his fingers. Yep, yep. Uh, huge rings. Yeah. Oh, there they are, right there. There goes the rings. So we're not making this stuff up. Uh, Hollywood is full of this stuff, man. And uh, what's this? Uh, this is ne Necronomicon by Alan Moore and Jason Burroughs. Interesting. Yeah, that looks like uh, Lovecraft up there. Yeah, because didn't Lovecraft make the ne Necronomicon? Oh, this he Neo. made the Necro. That's the Neo Nomicon. Neo something Nomicon. similar. Okay, got you. All right. Okay, who's next? <laughs> well, we can talk about Sandy Kubrick. We can talk about what else do I have on my notes? We can talk about Polanski, Roman Roland Demerick. What's that? Roman Polanski. Yeah. Rosemary's Baby. Ninth Gate with Johnny Depp, super occultism. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, let's go there. Let's start with Roman and then let's get into Depp. Okay. So, but Roman, Roman Polanski tied into the whole Sharon Tate was his wife, Manson. Um, yeah. Very dark figure. I, I, mean, I think that he is, I mean, he was basically convicted of drugging and raping, I think, a 15 year old. And then left the country, and apparently he's raped women. I mean, have accusations of him raping women in France. Oh boy! So he's just another one of these dudes that got away with it, pretty much. Got away with it, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, France has no extradition yeah. treaties, so. mm -hmm. but some of these people really admire him and praise him, and they talk about him at the Oscars and get up and clap like he's some kind of hero. Yeah, it's interesting. Man. And you know, people have to keep their mouth quiet so they'll keep their little career. They never talk about each other. They never expose each other, right? So it's kind of like the Hollywood has its own code of silence, Omerta, right? Yeah. And so, what's this? Epstein is Epstein really tied with this guy? Ah, uh, no. Okay. I think they somebody just made an art piece with him and Epstein in it. But that team had, had tons of friends in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, they all just denied knowing him after uh, the, you know, after he got arrested. But Epstein would definitely had a had friends in Hollywood like that. Yeah. 
Okay. So, I mean, so there you have a picture of Angelica Houston on Houston's dog. You've got Jack Nicholson who was in Chinatown. Mm. <laughs> the whole story of Chinatown is that the rich guy's daughter, uh, the rich guy's daughter is his daughter. Like, no, what is it? The dog, the granddaughter is his daughter. So he's raping his daughter, and then she had a baby. Oh. That's the whole theme of the entire the entire film. And then the guys say, well, it's Chinatown. You just don't understand it. It's too bizarre. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Chinatown. Okay. It's yeah. So Jack Nicholson plays a uh, detective. And it's really actually about kind of water rights in California and how people engaged in conspiracy to jack up the price of uh price of land by denying water rights to some of these places in the valley. It's pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting to weave another theme in there outside of the main theme. Uh, and John Houston is supposed to be like associated with the Black Dahlia murder because he was friends with a guy who uh, is possibly the likely suspect, Hodel, George Hodel, and that's Angelica Houston's dad. So you can type in John Houston, Black Dahlia. She was occultically murdered for sure, cut up. But this Black Dahlia, uh, his son, mm -hmm. son, thinks that his dad did it. Wrote a book about it. <clears throat> right. Hodel's his last name, H-O-D-E-L. He's still around. He's still around, he said? Yeah, George yeah. Hodel, well, that's... Yeah, so the retired LAPD detective thinks his father is the Black Dahlia. His father killed the Black Dahlia. And these are the stories you never hear about till like 30 years later, 40, 50 years later. There was actually a, a show, um, uh, something, they actually did a whole show about the Black Dahlia. Like something in the night or something like that. Yeah. The guy who played, who's the, what's the actor who plays the new. James T. Kirk in Star Trek. What's his name? Chris Pine. Chris Pine. So Chris Pine was that. Okay. Chris Pine is in the Black Dahlia. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I haven't seen this. It's I Am the Night is the TV series. Six yeah. episodes yeah. last year. I Am the Night right there. Interesting. I guess I'll check that out one day. <laughs> is it? Uh, you say you haven't seen it? I have not seen it, but I have listened to the uh, Ed Opperman interview George Hodel's son and talked about it. They had this creepy house called the Hodel House, and there's all kinds of shenanigans and things going on there with John Houston. And, uh, you know, the, these guys are the cults still around. So you don't see a lot of that stuff what happens, but they were up to all kinds of dark stuff. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat said, uh, talk about Man Ray artist. Right. And George Hodel. Right. So he was friends. Hodel was friends with Man Ray. He was an artist who did all these abstract paintings. I think they were surrealists, technically. They would call them surrealists. And so he would make surreal art. And some of these, like the Minotaur, the body is cut up in little pieces and it resembled the state of uh, the Black Dahlia. So Man Ray, yeah, if you type that in, that picture should show up. Let's see. I would just say Man Ray art. Uh, type in Man Ray Minotaur. He's at the center of the maze, right? Center of the labyrinth. Oh. Yeah, so look at, see, so you see these body parts and all this stuff. All this right. is, you know. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want to make those big. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can just kind of see how strange and yeah. their sensibilities were, and you just wonder what's influencing what. Or is the reality influencing the art, or is the art influencing the Black Dahlia? I don't know. Yeah, yeah some... Very dark stuff. Yeah. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. So, I mean, and you know what? The... the this goes into every industry as, as we're seeing, you know, we have the artists that they're into a lot of weird stuff, just like, you know, um, the lady that's connected to the pizza people. Um, well, the, the interesting thing is that uh, Hodel, this guy was a lot like Epstein in a lot of ways. 
he would give he would blackmail people. He had huge blackmail files, and he was a doctor, so he would arrange supposedly, allegedly, you know, abortions back when it was illegal and drugs, and then he would have that information to know about it, uh, to celebrities and things like that. So he'd have have leverage. Wow. Oh. So, oh yeah. So let me let me skip. Uh, go to somewhere before we go get to the next person we're going to talk about. The the guy that did Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, con it. Sorry about my typing, guys. <laughs> Peter Jackson. Uh, let's go sigil. Oh, they don't have it. it they don't have it there. They do have Damien Eccles. Um. I think I have a picture of it. Let me see if I can find that. Okay. So this guy right here, he's from New Zealand, and um, he does sigil magic and whatnot. For those that don't know, sigil magic is pretty much you have a symbol, you put some words in it, then you start deducting from the words, and you have a, pretty much a, a symbol with letters in it. Uh, let me give you an inference. Here's, here's a picture of... Uh, like see that. if this pops up. Okay, let me let me uh, stop sharing mine first. That's oh wait, hold on. That's this is pretty much what sigil magic looks like. Okay, so people have tattooed this stuff, or they 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 uh put it on the ground, or whatever they're gonna put it on. Okay, and uh, supposedly the spirit comes through it, or you can get some sort of good luck, whatever. Okay, all this stuff. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like, depending on who's drawing the sigil. Right, so let me stop sharing my screen and bring in yours. Let's see if I'll, Paul, there it is. Yeah, so there's Damien Eccles with Peter Jackson, and then here's the sigil you're talking about. Let's see if we can get this to go. Uh, sure, sure. Hold on, just a second. All right, no so you can see the thief and ask script. You turn them on. There you go. It's on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Yeah, but yeah. that's actually was done by Damien Eccles. It's a style of Damien Eccles. And uh, well, while we're at it, let's pull up up because he has the same one. Yeah. So, let me see if I can. Okay. So here, so look at that sigil tattoo, right? So that's uh, it. You don't think these guys are networked? Yeah, well, you haven't seen. It. It's, it's, it's yeah, cool. and it's not as you see. It's not just um, about American uh, Hollywood culture. It goes all the way over to other countries as well because most people don't belong to Christ and they're into this weird stuff. And they put it either in the directly in the film or indirectly in the film, or they they use it as rituals to make some of these films. And they call on the dark spirits, or for them, they, they're light spirits. And um, they do whatever they're going to do. So, right. So, if you look at this, if you can turn on that screen, you can see Depp with the same, the same sigil there. Yeah. So yeah, there it is on his chest. But these are like literal tattoos these guys have. Yeah, and Johnny Depp is a witch people. Oh man, here yeah. you, you ever see him making out with Marilyn Manson? Yeah, I, yeah. You, I mean, you can show it, but yeah. <laughs> I want to see the one with these two together. Oh yeah, here's here's uh death making your classic, you know, satanic hand signs. Tons of satanic hand signs in his um pictures of let's see, let's yeah. stop, sure. it's not coincidence, folks. And you know we so understand can you share that? Oh, hold on. Let me um add stream. There we go. Yeah. They know exactly what they're doing here. It's not oh, yeah. 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 And we're not we're not trying to show you the triangle on his armpit. We're just <laughs> we're showing you real stuff, okay? Uh, these people, uh, I, I think um, Johnny Depp said that all of his roles are homosexual. He, <laughs> I've heard that he, he channels um, entities to give him the tips to when he's doing his yeah doing his yeah challenge spirits. Uh, same thing with. Um, What's the guy you pointed out earlier that was in The Shining? 
Uh, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. It, Shirley MacLaine told him he's channeling, and he just laughed or smiled a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, Keanu Reeves. I think he's the one that said he goes on demon rides. Nicholas Cage said something similar. So you know, you can go and talk for yourself, people. Uh, it's also in a. I got about ten more minutes, Chris. Let's see. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can find this picture of Eccles and Depp together. I can't seem to find it. Oh, but here's the same kind of. If we pull up Damien Eccles, it's the same type of deal. Yeah. Let's see. So you can see this tattoo here. I'm almost. I got ten more minutes. All right. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So this is just a taste, everybody. I mean, there's there's a. Can you share? Can you share this picture? I don't think I can. Yeah, there you go. That tattoo that looks like a barcode. Didn't Jay Z use something like that on one of his albums? Uh, I believe it's a, it was a white album with red markings like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to find this other picture. I can't seem to find it. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right, there goes the, the, the skeleton key. Um, they had a movie called The Skeleton Key, and it was about voodoo. Right. And, and pretty much somebody shifting their soul into another person's body, but shifting them out of their body into the old person's body. Because they've been transferring their souls for you know decades or whatnot to other people. Can you share that screen? All right. There we go. So that's the depth of the There's these oh, guys yeah. making hands. He said she went to school with Johnny Depp. She must have went to Broward County High. I think that's what's called Broward County High. <clears throat> I, I'm from Miami, so or you know. I There's agree. Jackson with Eccles. Uh -huh. These two. There's Eccles of Marilyn Manson. I can't find these old pics. I'm trying to find these old ones of uh, Eccles and Depp together. Let's try this. Yeah. I, I've watched uh, for uh, Michelle in LA. I watched. I've watched a couple of Little Light Studios um, videos. Just I would just caution, and they're Seven Day Adventists, and sometimes they put some false information in there. That's I'll just caution with that. But I I watched a couple of their videos. Um, can you can you share this screen? I just put up because that's the picture of Depp and Eccles together. All right. So there there we are, people. Uh, more pictures of Eccles and Depp. Can you explain to them what what where the story about Damon Eccles really quick because I well, want to goes all the way yeah, it goes all the way back to a criminal case back in 1993 and he got out in 2011 with a group of people like Depp so here's Depp with Eccles and this is a famous tattoo with this in the center which I didn't know at this the time when I took this picture but I can't remember his name he's been in a Lana Del Rey um video but he's he does black and white tattoos. So these guys get this hexagram from the I Ching together. The angel in the world one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. It was uh, misunderstood. Uh, Miramar High, that's right. Not Broad County High, but Miramar High, yeah. My, uh, my cousin of mine went there too, and he found out that Johnny Depp went to that school. Yeah, so the, the echo, So it was Johnny Depp, Winona Weiner, and another other. Right. Two other witches. Henry Rollins, Dixie Chicks, Margaret Cho, um, just a whole bunch of, I can't remember who else. Like, and they lobbied. A lot of other, and, and, and Jackson, Peter Jackson. So. Yeah, right. And they lobbied to get uh, Damon Eccles out of prison. Well, they definitely did. They definitely used a lot of PR, but they also paid to get the best appellate attorneys available mm. to kind of uh, lever his way out. So he actually Committed. He actually pled guilty in 2011 to using something called an Alford plea, which is a constant it's a Supreme Court case that allows you to plead guilty while publicly stating you're innocent. But it's technically in a, not really technically, but in any court of law, they, uh, 
first degree murder anywhere. Yeah. But they kind of like go around saying, oh, yeah, no, we didn't do it. But no, it's a it's a guilty plea. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, here we go. <laughs> the 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 threads go deep, far and wide, and we won't ever hit a bottom with, with Hollywood. This is just the surface on the yeah. yeah. So any questions for William uh, as we start to wrap up here, um, guys? Any any questions dealing with Hollywood or Memphis? We're actually going to come back and do something on, Mem on the Memphis 3. Is that what it's called, Memphis 3? I'm going to talk to you anytime. I, yeah. could, I could talk your ear off for at least three hours on that. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. You know, um, well, hold on. Uh, Paul Booth is... You know about Paul Booth? Paul Booth, that name is not sound familiar. Okay. Uh, well, he's a satanic art. He does satanic art for the stars, this person is saying, or Watchmen for you. Uh, get on a list and you pay him to put on uh, whatever you, whatever weakness that he, he puts on. I mean, but that's everywhere. I, I get it. He works for the stars. So. Um, yeah, he's just another tattoo artist. There he is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's the book Abomination. It talks about the Memphis Three Murders, West Memphis Three Murders. And in the middle there is Damon Eccles, if for people that haven't realized what was in front of you. So uh, it's a pr pretty interesting story. And they got out, or he got out. Did all of them get out? Did what? Did all of them get out of prison? All three of them are out of prison, that's correct. All right. The so, guy's name is the guy tattoo artist is Mark Mahoney, Shamrock Social Club. Okay. So that was the guy who did the tattoos for Eccles. And the tattoo. Oh, okay. All right. History, if people are interested. Yeah. Check out the books. Check out the books. Um, uh, this person says, what about, let me see. Uh, Jessica King says, what about George Romero stuff? I wrote a comment earlier, and Tom Savini are both from Western Philadelphia. Um, what, what was the movie that they did? Was it Walking Dead? Or what was the yeah, a, a, one Walking made Dead. Them he started the zombie franchise here, the, 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 the whole zombie craze. Night of the Living Dead and all that. Day of the Dead. And all those things, gotcha. you know, yeah, that horror, horror, horror story. So you don't know, don't know much about um, George Romero, right? No, not, not, I don't, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm I, nothing I, surprised me these days. It's almost yeah. like the default is they're putting Easter eggs or occult symbols or numbers and stuff in their films. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> uh, okay, here's a question. Uh, does William see the numbers associated with WM3 five over five day if the if the crime 18 years in jail 11 was the year they got out etc you understand what you're trying to say there yeah I think so, but I, I didn't really see that kind of technology. I definitely have seen Eccles call himself Archmage 11 Arch 11 is like the prime number of Crowley system and the occult in general um, but the dates and things like when the kids died, it was May 3rd. I think it was during kind of a ritual holiday. I Sam, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so there may have been some thought by them at the time of what's going on. But uh, I mean, the morality of Crowley is that like the ideal sacrifice in magic and theory practice is a child of yeah. perfect innocence, a male child of perfect innocence who's eight years old. And so. Uh, that's a correlation between the victims and Crowley, for sure. And Crowley was brought up on stand. The prosecutors had a copy of Magic and Theory and Practice on the table. They asked him questions about Crowley. He was writing a secret language to himself while he was in jail. He mentioned himself, Baldwin, and Crowley in kind of a different language. And that, that tattoo that Eccles uses that scribble around there is called Theban alphabet. It goes back to a magical tradition and uh, back to uh, all the way back to Greece. And it's called the Theban alphabet. And Gardner, Charles Gardner, who started Wicca, used it often. So uh, Eccles is kind of like 
I think he's a wide ranging knowledgeable occultist from a variety of traditions, including yeah. Wicca, Crowley, and all this other stuff. So I think he's digested or had digested uh, in a kind of autodidact fashion. He had read a lot of that stuff even by the time he was 18. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, as we close, um, Someone mentioned uh, Tom Savini and uh, Jessica King. She mentioned Tom Savini that designed Predator and Jason Voorhees. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, Jason Voorhees, uh, one of these characters that are totally possessed. Well, I, I, all, from all the characters, the main characters from the 80s, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, by the end of the series, you see that they're all demon possessed. So there's always three spirits or something like that, or worm looking demons that come out of them. I used to watch all that stuff. <laughs> but the Predator, uh, it's not necessarily demonic. It's just uh, somebody's creation. I, I don't know anything. I haven't seen any references that say the Predator is like demonic or anything like that. Uh, not I, to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge either. Uh, here's the thing. People are just creative. And sometimes people, I used to draw a lot of this stuff. Uh, I used to have a comic book when I was younger. And I used to draw a ton of monsters and whatnot, but it wasn't stuff based on the occult unless it was on the evil side. And um, sometimes, even in the Bible, you'll find creatures that we would think are monsters, but they're in heaven, right? You have one creature with eye eyeballs all over its body. I mean, come on, you know? So right. you just have to find out where the evidence is for these people's occult rituals. It always leads back to something. But let, let's not go down the road, not saying that you are, uh, Jessica, but telling uh, general generally here um we could we could take the symbols and the this and the that and then we could start making our own little story through our imagination that all of these things have to be demonic or whatever so we gotta be careful with that um all of us have imaginations and we can come up with crazy stuff but when we see the proof the evidence especially was when it's from these people's mouths now we have a case uh, that's true so, you know, we, we, we'll have more shows about this stuff. We'll go into the eye symbol and the, the goddess symbol, the upside down uh, triangle, the, the right side up triangle, what it all means. We'll, we'll discuss symbols in other shows. But not for right now, we're talking about kind of new and old Hollywood and um, what it means for today. And this goes into the music industry and well, as well. We're coming out with another segment called The Spirit Behind the Music. And that's obviously all about music. So uh, William's gonna do one of those for, those for us as well because he has music on. Uh, um, so oh, I mean, we didn't even, call, we didn't even color, color Harry Potter, which is pretty amazing. Oh, I mean, there's Potter. a lot of musicians. Yeah, definitely. And so, we, I mean, it's another show. So we can come back to Harry Potter and its big influence on our culture. And, you know, I hope you guys got a real treat today. Hopefully it resonated with you and, uh, you took some notes and are able to spark conversation to tell people what they're actually being introduced to or uh, fanaticizing over. You know, it's one thing to watch a movie as entertainment. It's another thing to become a fanatic. That's where your heart lies. That's where your heart lies. So um, thank you for joining us today, William. Thank um, you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with you again. Yes, yes, sir. Me too. I really enjoy this conversation. And I see that the audience has enjoyed it too. Let me make sure that we didn't miss any questions. Dun, dun, dun. Solid MK project, Alphabet, Al Ozzy Albert. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're pretty much done, folks. And this is Hollywood Matrix episode six. As far as episode five, I just like to tell you we're going to redo it. We're still going to redo it 107. So. Just be patient. Thank you so much. And remember out there, preach the gospel and don't let them burn.